it is often also useful to have subqueries that do aggregations. Such aggregation subqueries can also be used to have nested aggregations. For instance, computing the average result for each student and then taking the minimum or the maximum of these averages. On this slide, we see one particular use of aggregation subqueries. We can use aggregation subqueries to make a query that returns precisely one value, one column and one row. In the subquery, we are querying the results. In particular, we are focusing on homework one results. And then we are aggregating all the points. We are taking as aggregation function the max. So this query will return the maximum number of points that any student has gotten for homework one. It returns a single column and a single row, a single value. In the outer query, we are joining the students table with results table. We are looking at the homework one results and we are checking whether the number of points that the student has got on homework one is equal to the maximum that any student has gotten on homework one. So this comparison will be true if the student has the best result on homework one. Recall that such a comparison between an atomic value and a subquery without the keywords all, any or some is only allowed if the subquery returns a single value. And in this subquery this is guaranteed because we have only one column and due to the use of an aggregation we also have only a single row. So this query will return all the students that have the best result on homework one. Previously we've solved this slightly differently. We've used all or any to find the students with the best result on homework one. SQL allows to use aggregation subqueries even in the select clause. In the select clause we are constructing one row of the output table. So we want a sequence of single values. An aggregation subquery computes a single value. This example query computes the total number of homework points for each student. Previously we have seen how we can solve this using group by. We can join the students table with the results table, we can select all the homework one results, then group by the student and aggregate the points using sum. That's one way to do it. Here on this slide, the same problem is solved without group by, but using an aggregation subquery in the select clause. We are querying the students table, and for each student, we are outputting a row with the first name, the last name, and this value here is obtained by querying the results table, selecting all the results that belong to the student that we're currently looking at. We are only looking at homework results, and then we are taking the sum of all the points. So the sum of the homework points for the student that we are currently looking at. And finally we are giving this column a name, we are calling it homework points. An important application of aggregation subqueries are nested aggregations. And for nested aggregations we are using aggregation subqueries in the form clause. On this slide you see an example of such a nested aggregation. In the from clause we have a subquery. The subquery queries the results table, looks at all the homework results, and then partitions the table by the student ID. So we form groups for each student. As the output for each of the groups we select the student ID and the sum of the points. So this will be the sum of the points that the student has obtained for all of the homeworks. 
and we are naming this column homework points. Now, this subquery computes the table shown here. We have the student ID and we have the total number of homework points that this student has obtained. We're giving this table the name x, so more precisely, we're introducing a tuple variable x that ranges over the rows in this table. And then in the outer query, we are selecting as output the average of x dot homework points. So x consists of three rows with homework points 18, 18, 5. And in the outer query, we are making another aggregation, which will compute the average of these points. So it returns a single row and the average is 13.66 something. So we have a nested aggregation. For each student, we compute the sum of the points and overall, we are computing the average of these sums. Let's try to construct the following query. We want to find the student with the best overall homework result. So we want to find the student that has the maximum sum of homework points. This is the last query that we've constructed. This query computes all the students that have at least 18 homework points. We've joined the student and the results table. We've looked only at homework results. We have formed groups for each student. And then we have checked whether the sum of the homework points is at least 18. So now we would like to change this because we would like to compare in such a way that we keep only those groups that have the maximum number of homework points. So let's start with a subquery that computes the number of homework points for each student. So we're writing something like select from the acquiring the results table. Let's call it R2 to distinguish it from R in the outer query. We are looking only at homework results. We need to form groups for each student. And we can select the sum of the points. Okay. Now, Let's maybe quickly check what this subquery gives us. This subquery should give us, if we at least output also r2.sit, then it should give us a table of the student ID and the number of points that the student has obtained. Yes, student 101 has 18 points, 102 has 18 points, and so on. Okay, I will go back. So in the subquery now, we have the number of points that each student has obtained for the homework. Now we want in the outer query, we want to make sure that the number of points that we've computed here is the maximum of this. How can we do this? We can say that this number of points in the outer query must be greater or equal to all of the values computed in the subquery. If it's greater or equal to all of them, then it must be the maximum of them. Let's check. And indeed, we get George Orwell and Elvis Presley that have both obtained the maximum number of points that anybody has gotten on the overall homework result. If you look at this query, then you see that there's a lot of redundancy. We are doing twice very similar things. In the outer query, we are outputting the names of the student with the sum of their homework points. Also in the inner query, we are computing the sum of the homework points for each student. 
So the question is, can we remove some of this redundancy? Can we write this up more elegantly? And one possibility to write this a bit more compact are views. Let's have a look. So we can create a view, homework points, and with this view we register the following query. This query queries the results table, looks only at homework results, forms group for each student, and then it outputs the student ID and the sum of the points obtained by the student. So this query will compute a table where the first column is the student ID SID and the second column is the sum of the homework points that the student has obtained. And the second column is called total. Now that we have this view, we can use it. So we can now create our overall query by joining the students table and this view homework points. Of course, we are joining this on the student ID. And then we are making sure that h.total, so the total number of points the student has obtained, is equal to the maximum of the total points from the homework points table. So this table contains the sum of the points for each student. So if we aggregate this with maximum, then we have the best result that any student has obtained. And then comparing whether this total of the current student is equal to the maximum will give us only those students that have obtained the best result. So this query will do the same as the query on the last slide. It will output all the students that have obtained the best overall homework result.